Well, he put me up there with Travis King, of all people. <laughs> I used to like y'all, man. Not no more. <laughs> you got your Bible turned to Exodus chapter 24. Uh, I always thank for the opportunity to preach. and Amen. For some reason, when every time I, uh, I do come to Hopewell and I do get to preach, my knees start knocking. <laughs> Worse than anywhere else, and I don't know why that is. But uh, this place means a lot to me, and y'all mean a lot to me. A lot of y'all... Uh, saints of God in here that's been here ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Y'all are monumental in my Christian walk with Amen. God. And without you, I don't think I would be where I'm at today. And I like how a lot of y'all been here a while. Like Brother Richie, a mean Sunday school teacher. Amen. Very mean, but he raised men in the Sunday school class, and that's what he was trying to do. Amen. He wanted boys that want sissies. He wanted tough boys that wanted to love God and serve God and do something for God. And uh, I can honestly say he put out a couple of good ones. He did. Even young ladies. Amen. Even young ladies in the Sunday school classes that they were in. God put up some good young ladies. Amen. And you know, God honors faithfulness. Yes. We see that all out in his book. And God honors faithful saints of God that just want to do something for God. You ain't got to be real smart. You ain't got to have a whole lot of knowledge. You ain't got to have a Ph.D. or a bachelor's degree or a doctor's degree in certain things. If you just love God, want to serve God, and want to do right by God, God will use you. Amen. He will change people's You're lives right. through you, amen. It's all about giving Him glory and honor in everything amen. that we do, amen. amen. Not a words less any man should boast. Not, right. Nothing good I do in my life is going to amount to nothing, but I sure right. do hope that I give God glory and honor when amen. I die, amen. amen. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 24, we're going to read about a man here, Moses. Amen. Moses loved God, amen. amen. Moses really loved God. He wanted to spend time with God. The Bible says in, Moses, uh, in Exodus chapter 24 and verse number 12, the Bible says in verse number 12 of Exodus 24, when you get it, stand if you don't mind. Amen. Read reading God, uh, honor God's word. Yeah, I heard somebody just stretch. That's what we're doing it for, amen. Stretch them legs out. So if y'all get to having a running spell, y'all already be warmed up, amen. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 24 and verse number 12, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me in the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up to the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon the mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up in the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Luke, if you don't mind praying for us. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible here talks about Moses here. Moses just wanted to be where God was at in his life. Moses just wanted to have a little bit of a glimpse of God. And the Bible says here, Moses, God called unto Moses. He said, come up in the mount and be there. I will give thee tables of stone and law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. You know what? God commanded Moses to come up that Mount Sinai. You know what Moses did? Moses went there. Yeah. Moses went there like God told him. God said, when you get there, be there. And guess what? He was there when God warned him there. Like, well, we need Christians nowadays when God calls you to be there. Just be there. Yeah. You say, well, nobody else wants to be there. Well, be there when God wants you there and be there. Amen. But the Bible says here that Moses here, he went up into the mount. The Bible says in the cloud covering the mount. So the Holy Ghost of God every day was about to meet with Moses. Right. Boy, I tell you, if I was in the church service and smoke started coming out everywhere, I would wonder who turned the fog machines on, amen. But the fog machines on wasn't all at this point, amen. God come by and met with Moses. The Bible says here for six days that cloud covered that mountain. And on the seventh day, the Bible says God the Lord spoke unto Moses. You know what? That wasn't good enough for Moses, just that one time meeting. He stayed there for 40 days yeah. and 40 nights. Boy, he loved God, didn't he? Yeah. He sure didn't want to be with God, didn't he? Love was a lot of times in life, we won't spend no more than six seconds on our knees. If we don't hear from God, we're up and out the door. But this man here, he stayed there for 40 days and 40 nights, just wanting to get a hold of God, yeah. wanting what God wanted for him and his people to lead them in the right way that God wanted them to go. Yeah. Love was, but I want to preach on and look in verse number 12. The Bible says, And the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me in the mount and be there. Be there. He said, And be there. Love was, might I tell you, you might be in church today. 
You might be sitting on that pew, but are you there really? You say, well, preacher, my body's here, but is your mind here? Yeah. Is your heart here? Yeah. Is your spirit here? Loved ones, I'm going to tell you one thing that you'll always see about people that leave church. Their body's here, but their heart's somewhere else. Right. If the world, the devil can ever get your heart, yeah. he can get your spirit, he can get your soul, he can get everything about you, and before you know it, that body is soon going to follow that heart and walk out the door of a church. Loved ones, we've seen it ever since we've been growing up in church. Young people that are tired of doing the things of God, tired of doing it God's way, wanting to try the world's way, and their heart's out there in the world, their body's in church, but before you know it, they don't get their heart back set on God, they'll soon leave, just like many others. Sad, but it's true. But Moses wasn't like that. Moses was there wholeheartedly. His mind was there. His spirit was there. He wanted to hear from God. And God showed up. God showed up. He said, Moses, when you get there, just be there. He said, buddy, when you just get there, just please just be there. Where, preacher? Just be there. Just be there. Where you want me at, God? Just be there. You say, well, God, what's God want me at? I don't know, but he wants you there. Why don't you ask him? He'll tell you where he wants you at. And when he tells you, just be there, amen. Just be there. Be there with your whole mind, your whole heart, your soul, your spirit, your body. Be there with your shout, amen. Be there with your soul. Hey, take your Bible too. Be there with your Bible. Be there when God calls you there and just be there. Love was mine, I tell you sometimes in this Christian life, you can't get a Christian to be there in church. Why? They're too distracted. That cell phone we carry in our pockets, if it buzzes or if it rings, it ain't going to take no longer than five seconds. And we're pulling it out to see who texts us. Love ones, we'll get home and watch CNN. God bless you if you watch CNN. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm about to make a statement. I ain't going to make it because y'all going to get mad at me. But I, now I'm going to say it anyway. I don't know if you say it if you watch CNN. Golly. <laughs> There's some messed up people on that radio station. Radio station, TV show, whatever it is. I don't even know. It's a bunch of clowns up there is all I know. But loved ones, we'll get so distracted watching CNN, Fox News, Newsmax. There we go, Newsmax. Yeah. Hey, all y'all, all y'all people know about Newsmax, y'all Republicans. Y'all know about Newsmax. But loved ones, we'll get so distracted on the things of this world that we, God, we, God, we, God can't even get to our hearts. Yeah. God can't even get in our minds. We're so distracted and so clouded in our minds that God can't even talk to us. Why? We're worried about what's going on with Ukraine. We're worried about gas prices. We're worried about a drop in the economy. We're worried about the stock market. We're worried about this. Worried about that. Loved ones, might I tell you, we worry too much. We're worry warts. Yeah, right. Loved ones, we serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, yeah. and when it's all said and done, He's going to sell it all. Yeah. The stock market's going to crash when he comes back. Gas prices are going through the roof when he comes back. And the White House is going to burn. So it's already heading that way anyway. So we're doing great. Amen. But God said, Moses, when you get there, be there. I'm going to show you in the Bible of Genesis chapter number 12. I'm going to show you who else has been there. You say, other people have been there too. Yeah, you should get there, amen. You should be there. I tell you, Moses was there. Where? He was there. (laughs) I'm going to tell you right now, he was there. Where God was there, He was there, amen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, and verse number 7, the Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said unto thy seed, Will I give this land? You know what that says right there? And there built he an honor unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Amen. Number one, we see who, who else has been there. We see Abram's been there. Yeah. Where? He was there. Where? He, he was there. What did he do there? He talked with God there. Yeah. He built an altar there. That's Loved ones right here in uh, Hamlet, North Carolina. Guess what's right there? An altar there. That's you know where you can get a hold of God at? Right there. Right there. Right there. If you want to get a hold of God in your life and talk to God, God made a place right there so you can get a hold of God. Amen. He made a place there for you. Amen. Abram said he built an altar. Why? Because God was there. <laughs> he wanted to get a hold of God there. Now in that Genesis chapter 35, you say, somebody else has been there. Oh, yeah, somebody else has been there. All right, we need to get there, amen. Love was it's a sad day when the altar don't get used in churches. But I tell you, I've seen it over and over where the altar has grown vines over it. People don't use the altar no more. They won't humble themselves before God. They say, well, preacher, I humble myself at home. Let me tell you, if you can't humble yourself before God at church, I doubt you're doing it at the house. You can take that as you want, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Love ones, let me tell you something. You know why we don't want to do that? Because of pride. That flesh don't like to be humble before God. That flesh don't like getting on his knees before a holy God. Because my flesh is better than everybody else. I'm better than this person. I'm better than that person. There ain't no way I'm as wicked as them. I'm not getting on an altar. Love ones, might I tell you, God's there at that altar. And if you want to get close to God, you better use that altar right there. Amen. Better use it. 
No, the Bible says in Genesis chapter number 35 and verse number 7. Well, I feel like preaching today. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like preaching. I don't think y'all liking it, but I feel like preaching, man. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number 35 and verse number 7. The Bible says, and he built there an altar <laughs> and called the place El Bethel. Why did he do that? Because there. <laughs> God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. We see Abram, he talked with God there in an altar. And you know what Jacob did there? He saw God there. Yeah. Lewis, may I tell you, when you get an altar built <laughs> and you get a holy God there, guess what? You're going to see God there, amen. And you know what happened in the Christian's life when he gets a glimpse of God? <laughs> he wants to see it again. Yeah. He wants to hear him again. That's he right. wants to see him again. That's he right. wants to get a hold of God again. Where? There. You gonna get there? I hope you get there. Yeah. No, then the Bible says in First Kings. Yeah. First Kings, the Bible says in First Kings, turn there. Ha, turn there. Yeah. There's gonna be one new word y'all gonna know by the end of the service is there. Y'all yeah. all gonna be able to spell it, amen. I didn't know how to spell it until I started writing the message out. <laughs> Can you believe that? Homeschool education, amen. <laughs> First Kings chapter number 17. We see Abram met God there. We say saw Jacob saw God there. Not only that, the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse number 4, the Bible says, and it shall be. Oh, still hit pages turn. Y'all got it? I want y'all to see this. The Bible says in 1 Kings 17, 4, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Not only that, not only Abram, he talked with God there. Jacob saw God there. But God provided for Elijah there. Right. Where? There. Right. That was might I tell you, when you get down on the altar, God will provide for you there. You yeah. say, what are you saying, preacher? He'll meet your needs. Yeah, right. He'll take care of your problems. Yes, he he'll take care of your wants. Yeah. Why? If you just trust God, give it to God, He'll provide for you there. Where? Yeah. Might be on your church pew. Might be on your altar. Yes. Might be on your couch sitting on his recliner, opening your Bible. God will meet you there right. if you want Him there. Yeah. He'll yeah. provide for you there, amen. Yeah. He'll take care of you there. No, that the Bible says in 2 Kings. There's somebody else who's been there. These, these, these right here, these were a couple guys. A couple guys in this book been there. We see Abram's there. Jacob was there. Elijah was there. And guess who else was there? God was there. Yeah. Boy, the, the good one was there, amen. No, that the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter number 7 and verse number 5. 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse number 5. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And then when they were come to the utmost parts of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man where? There. There wasn't a man there. <laughs> they all done left. Why, preacher? Well, the Bible says in verse 6, For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of great hosts. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. And they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and they fled for their life. You know what they said, buddy? We ain't fighting tonight. Yeah. You can have this place. Yeah. We are not fighting you. You can have it all. And they left it. Where? There. Right. <laughs> they left it there, buddy. Yeah. The Bible says in verse number 8, look at this. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried then silver and gold and raiment it, and went and hid it, and came again and entered, and entered into another tent, and carried this also, and went and hid it. The Bible says in verse number 5, there was no man there. Mm -hmm. Loved ones, these lepers here, they were outcasts to society. Right. Nobody wanted them. Nobody yeah. cared for them. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the world would have thought them better off dead. Yeah. They had a disease that was uncurable. Yeah. Their family didn't have nothing to do with them. Family couldn't see them. Friends couldn't go help them. Yeah. Loved ones, they were lepers. A very, very nasty disease that was very contagious at that time. Yeah. And what they did with them, they cast them outside the gate, That's right. outside the city. Let them alone to themselves. What? Just to sit there and starve and die. Lonely. Yeah. Worthless. No good for nothing. Loved ones, might I tell you, but God took care of them there. Yeah, that's right. God looked out for them there. Yeah. He gave them silver. He gave them gold. Yeah. He gave them food to eat, yeah. clothes yeah. on their back, and even a nice place to sleep that night. Yeah. God took care of them there. Yeah. Loved ones, you might say, well, the world don't like me. People at school pick, make fun of them because I love yeah. God. Loved ones, don't worry about them. You got God there. You're going to be just fine. Yeah. Loved ones, might I tell you, the, the society might not like you. The government might not like you. Your family might not even like how you even raise your kids or even the stand you take, but who cares? God's there. Yeah. I'd rather have God on my side than a yeah. thousand men. Yeah. Loved ones, God's there. God took care of the lepers there. 
But as we have seen in the Bible, we've seen that Abram's been there, Jacob's been there. Uh, we see that Elijah's been there, and God protected the lepers there. But we're going to preach on this real quick. That was the introduction, amen. Y'all like that? <laughs> the title of the message is, When's the last time you've been there? Yes, now, we see Abram, he's been there. Jacob's been there. Elijah's been there. The lepers have been there. Even Moses has been there. But loved ones, might I ask you, when's the last time you've been there? The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 6, Matthew chapter number 6, Matthew chapter 6. We're just going to get down to the nitty gritty of it today. Loved ones, we need Christians that want to be there. We got to have Christians that want to be in church. Christians that want to serve God and be there where God's at. We got to get that desire back in our hearts. That burning in our hearts just to please God, no matter who it makes mad, no matter who it upsets. I just want to do what God wants me to do. Mm-hmm. Loved ones, we got this at our pastor at our church calls it cultural Christianity. And boy, is it wrecked our churches. Cultural Christianity. Don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Yeah. Don't want to stand up for nothing. Mm-hmm. Don't want to make nobody mad. Loved ones, might I tell you, that is not God's way. Yeah. That is not the Bible way. That is heresy. Yeah. Loved ones, if it goes against that book, it's yep. wrong. Yeah, yeah, if they teach against that book, they're heretics. Yeah, and I'm yeah. telling their face, and I really don't care. Yeah. Loved ones, you got one or two options. Get left or get right. Yeah, That's the only God's two options. Get left or get right. Yeah, That's it. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 21, when's the last time you've been there? The Bible says in verse number 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's the Bible right there. The Bible says, where your heart is there, where your treasure is there, will your heart be also. Loved ones, number one, I like to say, when's the last time you've been there? Number one, you choose to be there. Yeah. It's your choice to be yeah, there. That's right. that's true. If you want to be there, you can be there. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to be there, guess what? You ain't got to be there. Right. Yeah, if you don't want to be where God's at, you ain't got to show up. If you don't want to do what God wants you to do, you ain't got to listen. If you don't want to be there, you do not have to be there. It is your choice. God's not going to break your arm to serve Him. God's not going to break your family to serve Him. God's not going to tell the preacher to go break your arm to come to church. He shouldn't have to. If you're saved, you should want to be here. You should want to be there, amen. You should want to be there. You choose to be there on Sundays. It's your choice. You can either choose to be here on Sunday or roll over and get some extra hours of sleep. It is your choice whether or not you want to be here on Sunday. It's your choice whether you want to be here on Wednesday nights. It's your choice whether you want to be here doing VBS. It's your choice whether you want to be here doing revival. It is your choice whether or not you want to be there. Loved ones, we're not going around breaking people's arms, breaking people's windows, breaking people's doors down to come to church. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but the doors ain't busting wide open full of people in church houses. I don't know if you realize that or not, but they're not. Churches are going slimmer and slimmer. You know why? Because people don't want to be there no more. They don't want to be there. You say, why is that preaching? Because their treasure is not there. You know, you hear a lot of people, a lot of people that are so-called Christians, you know, what we call them blood wash. They say, oh, preacher, I love God, I love God. You know, God's my best friend, all this and all that, and they never soak church. Yeah. You know, preacher, I love God. They never read their Bible. They never pray. They never talk about God. But loved ones, they love God. You say, what's wrong with that? Their treasure's not in it. Yeah, their treasure's not in it. Loved ones, might I tell you, if you put, if you got a big old house, you got a lot of guns in there, praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Rednecks unite. You know, you got a lot of guns in there. You got some nice fishing poles. You know, you got a bunch of money in there. You know, got a bunch of ammunition. Ammunition is gold this day and time. If you got some left, I'd like to buy some from you. I don't care what it is. I'll set somebody else. But, loved ones, if you got all this treasure in your house, all this money, all this gold, loved ones, you're going to stay there. Yeah, right. You're going to guard it. Yeah, true. You're going to keep watch over it. You ain't going to put all this money in the house and then leave it for 5, 10, 15 years. Let just anybody come in your house steal your stuff. No, you're going to take care of your treasure. Yeah. You're going to look over your treasure. You're going to look over your house. Loved ones, but you know what's so sad? We don't guard our walk with God like we should. We don't guard our prayer life or our Bible reading or our church attendance like we should. And the devil comes by and takes it away. The Bible says he has a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's a thief. He comes but to steal and to kill. And he's doing it a lot. But it's your choice to be there. Not only that, the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 18, Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 20, it's your choice to be there. Now, I hope by the end of the service that, especially, uh, I know we have youth camp. Uh, Unfortunately, I ain't going to be able to go this year. I'm sad about it. But, you know, that's just how some things work out, you know. But I know that a lot of times at youth camp, we got a lot of young folks that make decisions to be there. Be there where God's at. 
Loved ones, the sad part about it is we'll have a lot of young folks that make commitments to be there, but when they get home, mom and daddy don't want to be there. Yeah. Grandma and grandpa don't want to be there. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, that fire that they had is gone. Mm-hmm. Loved ones, don't be the one that puts your kids' fire out. That's right. Don't be the one that discourages your child or That's a young right. person in church, discouraging them from serving God. That's right. I've heard preacher might say this several times. Serving God is the best life. Mm-hmm. It is the best life. Amen. Loved ones, might I tell you the benefits are out of this world. Right. Out of this yeah. world. Mm-hmm. Loved ones, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 20. When's the last time you've been there? Yeah. The Bible says in verse eight, uh, Matthew 18, 20, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Mm-hmm. Not only that, when's the last time you've been there? It's your choice to be there. But not only that, you meet God's people there. My best friends I've ever met has been at church. My dearest friends I have, I met them at church. My ones that stuck through me through some rough patches, some rough stuff, a lot of y'all would have left. They stuck with me. What? Because I met them in church. You know why we sit together so good? Because we got the same God. We got the same book. We love God. And loved ones, when you get two friends that love God, they're inseparable. Right. I'm going to tell you, if one friend leaves and the other friend loves God, it's probably because that friend stopped loving God. <laughs> that's usually how it always works. So, preacher, that's not true. I'm telling you, that's how it works. That's how Christian brothership works. If you both love God, you'll walk agreed, you'll talk agreed, you'll talk about the goodness of God, and you'll stick together, buddy. You'll stick together. Loved ones, might I tell you, the world's friends, they'll turn their back on you. They'll stab you in the back to get that promotion. They'll stab you in the back to get them extra dollars. Yeah. They'll do everything they can to get just a little bit higher, another peg in life, to succeed for their own selves. And they don't care if your, mud, your face is in the mud or not. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, you meet God's people there. That's Where? Right. There. You meet people, God's people there. I met God's people there in Hamlet. Yeah, at Hope Will Independent Baptist Church. I met some of God's people there. Amen. I met some of my friends there. You say, you say, preach, I'm going to tell you one thing, though. Christian religion is weird. We're some weird people. I tell people this all the time. You know, it's the only place you can go to it. People you've never met before and go up to a guy and say, what's up, brother? Yeah. Go up to a lady and say, how you doing, sister? And you've never met before a day in your life. But it's just something. You've got that God that unites you. Yeah, right. That love of Christ that just unites you. You know, we're just one big happy family. Yeah. With a bunch of dysfunctional kids. But, hey, yeah. we love God, amen. And that's all that matters. Not only that, you meet some comrades there. Yeah. You meet battle buddies. Mm-hmm. Loved ones to help and aid in the fight. Yep. Yeah, You're going to get injured in this fight. Mm-hmm. You're going to get scratched up, beat up, beat up, shot up, mm-hmm. cussed up. <laughs> You're going to get everything. But it's good to have people that love God to help Amen. you. Amen. Put bandages on you when you need it. Right. Wrap right. you up and tell you good things Amen. and tell you, hey, man, we serve a good God. God's going to take care of us. Loved ones, I'm telling you, I've had some times in my life when that, it's just been bad. And then just a preacher or uh, just, a, just a guy in a church or a member or a sister or whatever, she'll come up to you and shake your hand or he'll shake your hand and he'll say these simple words. I'm praying for you. Yeah. Right, bro. Now, you don't realize that speaks volumes. Yeah, and it speaks volumes when you know the person's going to do what they said. That's right. Yeah. It speaks volumes when you that person, you say, man, I know when he gets home, now, he's going to be praying for me. Yeah. That speaks volumes. That'll help you. Yeah. You say, well, preacher, I don't have any friends. But well, when's the last time you've been to church? <laughs> when's the last time you've been there? Yeah. But if you want friends, y'all, you got to just come to church. Right. You've got to give you a friend, amen. Yeah. Got to find you a friend, amen. Not only that, John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12. When's the last time you've been there? John chapter number 12. I thank God I've been there, amen. Yeah, amen. I thank God I've been there. The Bible says in John chapter number 12, in verse number 26, I believe every young person to know this verse. Every young person should know this verse. The Bible says in John 12, 26, If any man serve me, let him follow me. The Bible says, And where I am there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Yeah. Loved ones, you not only uh, can you find friends there, but number three, you can serve God there. Yeah. Where? Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere you want to go, you can serve God there. Where? Right down the street. You can serve God in Mexico. You can serve God in California. Anywhere you want to go, you can serve God there. If God wants you there, you can serve God there. Loved ones in the military, we always had this thing that when people get out of the military, Marines, Army, National Guard, whatever it is, they always want this one tag on their back, honorable service. They don't want dishonorable service. They don't want that. They want a tag, a check by their name that says honorable service. He paid his dues. 
He paid his due. He did right by this country, by his battalion. He did it right. He did it right. Though as the Bible says right here, that if you serve me, let him follow me. God said, if you serve me and you follow me, guess what? My father, he's going to honor you. You know what, loved ones? That is the best honorable service any of us can ever get. Not an honorable service by the government, not an honorable service by your family, but an honorable service from the Father of God himself. You get an honorable service through him. It's better than anything. Yeah, yeah. But once I don't, I don't know about you, but I sure would like when I get to heaven, God says, honorable. You done yeah. a good job, son. Enter in that good and faithful service. We got this misconception that what we think, that just because we get saved, yeah. God's going to say, enter in that good and faithful service. Yeah, yeah. We got this misconception also that when we enter in heaven, God's going to say, you did good, son. Honorable service. That is not true. Yeah. You can be saved on your way to heaven and be wicked as a devil. I'm telling you, we can go down the street, we can find them because I know in uh, North Carolina and Alabama, everybody's saved. Yeah. Everybody's going to heaven, amen. Everybody's going to heaven. But loved ones, I want God to put a check mark by my name and say, you know what? Yeah. Nate had a lot of faults. He might not have said the right things. He might have talked not talked the right way. And he definitely wasn't the most educated. But guess what? He honored me. Amen. He honored me. Amen. And I want that. Loved ones, not you can serve God there. Let me tell you something. It's satisfying there. It's satisfying to serve God. It's satisfying to go out and give out a Bible track and lay your head on your pillow at night knowing that, hey, I told somebody about God. I told somebody about eternal redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's something about going on visitation with your comrades, with your brothers, with your sisters in Christ, and you go to the visitation and you knock on doors and a man gets saved or just hand out Bible tracks. Love ones, that is a satisfying service to God. Yes. It's satisfying to serve God. Love ones, might I tell you it's good to stay there where God's at. Yep. You know, say, why is that when everyone else leaves, when everyone else goes, just stay there where God's at. You say, well, preacher, it ain't popular, it ain't healthy, it ain't happy. Love ones, just stay there where God's at. Yep. When everybody else leaves, when everybody else turns their back, when everybody, all the cool kids out of school say, you know what, if you're a Christian, you can't be a part of this group, just shun them and stick with God, amen. Yep. It's the best line. Yep. The government don't like it. The government don't like Christians. The White House don't like Christians. Hollywood hates Christians. I don't know if y'all learned that enough, but Hollywood hates Christians. They hate God. They don't like God. But loved ones, might I tell you, when everyone else leaves and it's not popular, just stay there. Why? Why, why would I stay there? Preacher, because God's there. That's right. Just stay there because God's there. No, that the Bible says in John chapter 14. We're about to wind this thing down. John chapter 14, verse number 3. When's the last time you've been there? Where? There. Where, preacher? When's the last time you've just been there? When's the last time you've been there? The Bible says in John 14, verse number 3. I like this. The Bible says in John 14, 3, And if I go again, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. So God promised you one thing. He said, I'm coming back, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, I'm coming back. He said, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, There. You may be also. Yeah, that's right. You know what, loved ones? Number four, you can't get there by yourself. Yeah, amen. You say, well, preacher, I'm a pretty good guy. You know, I, I pay my bills. I work hard. I take care of my family. I'm a pretty good guy, but I ain't good enough with God. Yeah, amen. It ain't good enough with God. Amen. God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right. He said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Yeah, you amen. know what God said? God said, you can be good. You can be a great A citizen in the world's eyes. You can pay your taxes. You can do everything right in the world's eyes. But if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll bust hell wide open. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the only way. Yeah. He is Amen. the only way. Amen. You can't get there by yourself. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 9, not of works, lest any man right. should boast. We can't work hard enough. Nope. We can't earn enough money. We can't do enough good in this world. To where our, our good outweighs our bad. We're all sinners yep. in need of a Savior. Yeah, right. And that's Jesus Christ. Right. Loved ones, you can't get there by yourself. Nope. Not only that, might I tell you, I got there one day. Yeah. And guess what happened when I got there? God gave me a place. Yeah. Yeah. Where? There. <laughs> he gave me a place there. You say, well, not only that, preacher, guess what? God's looking for me there. Yeah. Yeah. He's looking for me there. He didn't stop when he saved me. He's waiting for me to be there. And I can't wait to be there myself. Loved ones, I can ask you this question. Are you going there? I'm going there. I know I'm going there, but are you going there? Loved ones, might I tell you, I got a lot of family members that are there. 
told me they was going to be there before they died. And I'm hoping they are there. I don't know. It's between me, them and God. But I know I'm going to be there. I know I'm going to be there. And I can't wait to see God because He's looking for me there. Amen. Loved ones, I got a place there. I got a mailbox already ready, ready up with my name on it. I already got my front door picked out, buddy. Yeah. I, already, I already got my place picked out. God's already got it for me. Man, I'm going to have me a lazy boy recliner and everything. I tell you, I already got a place there, man. Yeah. God's already got me a place there. And I can't wait to be there. Where he's at. Amen. Knowing that lastly, lastly, the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 27. Matthew chapter number 27. We have established that you cannot get there by yourself. Right. You cannot. Nope. Oprah Winfrey, she might say there's 500 ways to get to heaven. But might I tell you, Oprah Winfrey's a liar. That's right. And she's more crazier than, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, you can fill in the blanks on that. But she ain't right in the head. There ain't but one way to get to heaven. Right, right. That's through Jesus Christ. Buddha ain't the way. Muhammad right. ain't the way. All them jokers are dead and they ain't getting back up. But Jesus Christ died and rose again. And he is alive today. And he's doing just fine. Amen. Amen. And he's still saving souls and saving sinners. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 27 and verse number 35. This is the last point, but I want you to get you, lay your eyes on this. This is talking about your Savior, Jesus Christ. This is talking about all the things he went through for you. This is talking about the sadness, the heartbreak, the harness that he went through just for you. Why would he do that? Well, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, verse 35, the Bible says, And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Look at verse 36 real closely. The Bible says he's sitting down. They watched him there. They just watched him. They just watched him. You know what the sad thing about it is, loved ones? We can get up here, Brother Mike, Luke, Aaron, Brother James, Brother John, Brother Ted, my dad, my brother. We can sit up here and preach all day long till we're blue in the face about how God can save you, can change you, can clean you up, can give you a home in heaven till we're blue in the face. And the sad part about it is there's a lot of people that just sit there. They'll just sit there. They'll just look at the preacher. They'll just sit there and say, well, this God you're talking about, he, he don't interest me. This Christ you're talking about, He don't interest me anymore. Lord, as I tell you, He don't interest most Christians anymore. And that's sad. We've got to that point. But little ones, might I tell you, the sad part about it is we can preach to a blue in the face on the radio stations. We can broadcast it out across this town. And a lot of people just sit there and not do nothing with God. We'll lay it out in their lap saying, hey, here's what you need to do to get saved. This is all you need to do. You ain't got to pay no money. You ain't got to show up to church. This is a simple plan of salvation. All you got to do is ask God to come in your heart. That's it. And you know what they say? I don't want it. They just sit there. They just watch you there. They don't care about God. They don't want God. You know what to help this country? God. But you know what this country's doing? They're just sitting there watching them. Yeah. They don't care about God. They don't want God. They don't love God. Love was mine. I tell you, it's sad here at His cross. Yeah. You see your Savior here that's bleeding and dying right. for a lost and wicked world and a very world that hated His guts. Right. The very own, the Bible says He came to His own and His own received Him not. His family didn't want nothing to do with him. His home didn't want nothing to do with him. His friends turned his back on him. The very ones he came to save hated him and despised him and called him a hypocrite, a phony, a liar, a false prophet. They called Christ that. They spit on him. They mobbed him. They stabbed him. They pierced him. They spit in his face. They watched him bleed. They watched him die. And they just sit and watch them there. You say, well, preacher, that's sad. Why would anybody do that? But yet it happens every day. What happens every day? We preach the gospel message about uh, God coming to the world to save sinners. We preach about the goodness of God. We preach about what Christ went through so you can be saved. And people walk out to church and not accepting Him. There's no doubt in my mind there were some kids at VBS that won't save. It happens every year. Not all of them get saved. And I wish they would, but not all of them accept Christ. 
And it's sad. But you know what happened? They just watched him there. The preacher preached about the goodness of God. You need to get saved. But a lot of them just watch him there. Loved ones, might I tell you, you need to get a hold of God when he's there. Yeah, loved ones, if God's convicting your heart to get saved, you better take notice of it right now. Because there might come a day where he don't knock no more. That's right. There might come a day when he says, all right, but you don't want me, enough's enough. I won't bother you no more. He said, God wouldn't do that. God wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, he'll do that. The Bible says he'll turn it over to something called a carnal mind. You ever seen people, anybody like that, just mad about everything, ill about everything? Don't even know why they're mad, but they're just mad. They hate God, they hate Christians, they hate church, they don't have nothing to do with church, especially older people. I don't know if you ever realize this or not. But when you go on visitation, you see an old grandma you think is sweet, and she ends up cussing you out. The first thing you think is carnal minded. I'm sorry, but that's the best way I can explain it. An old grandma cussing you out on visitation. Y'all know y'all think that was funny. All y'all have to sleep. <laughs> y'all don't want to meet God there. <laughs> but do you see him there? Yeah. Loved ones, it's sad there watching people throw away God's grace, throw away God's mercy, and don't want to meet him there. But I'm glad one day I met him there. Yeah. I'm glad one day a 131 farm lane, a double wide trailer, Amen. in my parents' bedroom. I knelt down before God. Boy, I tell you, a sinner on his way to hell, and God saved me there. Amen. A man that had nothing going for him. A boy that wasn't smart, didn't have nothing going for him, didn't have the accolades, didn't have the athletic ability as all the other kids, didn't know as much as all the other kids. But all I did was I said, God, you want to meet me here? And I was there, and I asked God, and he saved me right there. Loved ones, that was the best decision I ever made. Where? There. Where God saved my soul there. And I can take you to a place. Do you have a place there where God saves you? Do you have a place where God met you? Though as might I tell you, once you get there, it's good every once in a while to go back there. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, there's nothing. I, I just want to drive down there in that house one day and just look at it. I seen Rusty, he sold that house not too long ago. He had pictures up and I, I got to looking at it. And I pointed the bedroom out. And I looked at Caitlin and I said, you know, that's where I got saved at, right there in that bedroom. Amen. I got to say right there, you know, to me, that is my most important memory in my whole life. Yeah, right. Is the day God saved my soul. Yeah, right. My most greatest memory in my life is when God yeah, saved right. my soul. Loved ones, you'll meet God there. It's good to go back there. The woman at the well, she didn't forget when she met no, God. Sir. To the world, the Bible says here that he looked at her. He said, the husband that you have ain't even your husband. You know what he said? He said, you got many husbands. You know what the world society would tell her? She's a harlot. Nobody wants her. She's nasty. Nobody wants her, but God loved her. That's and God right. wanted her. Amen. And God met her there. Where? Amen. He met her there. You know what, loved ones? There's no doubt in my mind. She said, come see the place. <laughs> come see the place. Where well, the Lord told me. Come see the place. Amen. And she bought them there. Yeah. And she showed them where Amen. God met her at. Where? Right there. Yeah, do you need to get there? Do you need to get there? Or do you need to go back there? Loved ones, might I tell you this in closing? God's always been there. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him before he careth for you. Lord, I was going to tell you, he cares for you tonight. Mm -hmm. He's always been there waiting on you. Yep. He's always been there when you think nobody else is there. He's always been there. Yeah, right. He's always been there when darkness was present. He's always been there when temptation was near, when the battle got rough, when sadness was all around. He was always there. Always. When he, even when death struck your life, when you had to bury that loved one, and you felt so alone. God was there. Amen. He was right there Amen. the whole time. He was there. When family forsook you, when friends forgot about you, when life seemed not worth living anymore, God was sitting right Amen. there. He was right there. Loved ones, might I tell you, He wants you there. Where? He wants you where He's at. That's the whole point of the whole message. God just wants you there where He's at. Just get back where God's at, man. There's no sense in living a Christian life without God's presence. There's no sense in trying to go through this thing without God. Loved ones, you might be miserable, but it's a whole lot better going through it when God's right, right there. Right, right, right. Just get with God. God wants to meet you there. Amen, Brother Mike. God spoke to you and you need to come. Come on. Don't turn him away. Mm-hmm. Thank God he'll meet you there.
He's a faithful God. God wants you to be there more than you want to be there. You can rest assured of that. God wants to save a sinner more than a sinner wants to be saved. How do you know that? Because he got there before you did. He's been where you've been. So you can get where he wants you to be. If you're here and you're lost, you need to be saved tonight. If you're not where you ought to be with the Lord, you need to get there tonight. Come talk it over with the Lord. If you want somebody to pray with you, they'll pray with you. If you are somewhere where God don't want you to be, you need to get out of there. And get where God is. God's faithful. Thank God he's faithful. Thank you, Lord. There's some people trying to get there tonight. Why not you? Don't get content somewhere where God ain't at. He said, come unto me. That's where we need to be. Amen. Everyone stand. Get your burgundy hymn book. I'll sing something tonight. 164, leave it there. Come leave it at the altar. If the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold,
we can leave it there. Amen. Appreciate that, Nate. Amen. Appreciate Amen. that message. Appreciate the Lord. God's good, ain't he? Amen. He knows exactly what we need when we need it. If we'll just be there, God will do the rest. Amen. 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 We got some hot dogs left out there, don't we? Sausage dogs, potato chips, and drinks. Amen. How many's got to work tomorrow? Amen. Appreciate y'all too. Work hard. We're going to take it easy. <laughs> Terry Brooks raised his hand, but Kyle didn't raise his. <laughs> he said, Daddy, I won't be there. <laughs> he said, You don't think the Lord's there, brother, tomorrow. He's going to be there. Amen. Amen. I hope you can enjoy your day tomorrow if you're off. Amen. Try to slow down. I, I, I'm the world's worst, so I'll just tell you what I know I struggle with. My mind's always a thousand miles an hour, and I don't ever slow down like I should. Take it easy. Take a deep breath and enjoy the Lord. Enjoy your time off with your family. And let work worry about work Tuesday or whenever you got to go back. Amen. If you like Richie, you'll be off the whole week. Glory be to God. Yeah. Only problem is you got to put up with Andre all those days. Amen. <laughs> He said he's going to send her to work a couple of days. I don't know. Amen. But enjoy your time. Maybe if you're not in a hurry tonight, stay around and fellowship with us. Amen. Make sure you tell the preacher you appreciate the message and his wife coming up, Miss Caitlin. They've just always been a blessing. I hate they're not going to be at youth camp. Amen. But we're going to be there and the Lord's going to be there. Amen. We'll try not to rub it in on you too hard, but I know he's working and taking care of a family now. Amen. So you pray for them as they head back. When y'all head back? Monday evening? Monday evening, pray for them, amen, as they travel back down to Alabama. Well, they abode now, amen. They used to be there where the Lord is, and now they went to Alabama. I kind of got to thinking about that thing, Brother Nate, amen. I said, you and the, uh, uh, Travis King got y'all some wives. They had to go there to Alabama to get them. <laughs> amen. I don't know, amen. We'll just leave that alone, amen. amen. Hang out with us if you can. Amen. Enjoy your time uh, tomorrow. and. Amen. Just be a witness to somebody wherever you go, whatever you do. Amen. Just be where the Lord wants you to be. Deal with those things as they arise in your life and stay there with the Lord. Kind of been the thought today, man. Just kind of get deal with those things and be there with the Lord. Amen. Appreciate the Lord today. Amen. All hearts clear. Friday. Friday. Brother John's going to drive the big bus up to uh, Kannapolis to revival. Amen. So we'll take that thing on a test voyage before we take it out to camp with our uh, designated driver, John Lockley, amen. And then before youth camp, we're trying to line it up with the youth to get over there and kind of scrub that van, bust down real good and clean it up, put the name on the side. We got the letters. We've had them a while. We need to get that going. So, amen. Sign up for youth camp, amen. And let us know if you're trying to go so we can get a head count. We got to get a head count up to them so they don't have many people to prepare food for. We start getting this thing on the road. It won't be, what, three weeks? Youth camp will be right on us, won't it? Amen. amen. So, amen. Anybody else going up to revival? I think they might be trying to take a load Thursday night, too. We'll see. Amen. If you're going by yourself, enjoy yourself. Amen. Good preaching up there. Anything else? Amen. God's been good, ain't he? Amen. Let's dismiss in prayer and ask the blessing on the food. Amen. Amen. Brother Nate, we got another preacher in the church now. Brother Ben, he's out doing festivals. Amen. Good to have, amen, his wife here with us and her son. Amen. How about dismiss us, brother, and bless the food if you would.